the um, gum trees were that was on the grave site and that's and they're not there anymore they're gone and that's where the ha that's where the house is isn't it Jabal yeah. right smack bang in between all those trees oh hang on Javon so the house is down where those green trees are well, no, the house that up the Udapa is up the top, further right up the top where the other vines are. Over the, yeah. Okay, so all those trees over there have been cut. Oh, we'll go over and have a look there then. Yeah, just have a look at them being cut. Um, and I'll um, film, them film being cut. That, yeah. yeah. So, how are we going to... We'll leave here, I guess, then. Eh? Over that way? Yep. And over here is it too? Yeah. Down with the banks too? Yeah. yeah. So Pete's going to do the drone. We're going to get some footage. And then um, when we get the aerial footage, we'll get your mum yep. to speak on the background. Okay. So she can pinpoint and we'll put like little markers. Yeah. That'll be handy, eh? Oh, yeah. He's trying to figure out the sites. The um, the way that they used to be able to figure out where the where the um, Utapa was was by um, the tree stumps or the trees. But now that they've been felled, it's a lot harder. So that's the ridge line along where that pine trees is, is the ridge line. Yep. And there's yep. Vaughan and there's the race courses down this way. Yes. Yep. Well down into that gully. Into this one. Is where the where the burial site is. Okay, yep. so it must be where the house is, eh? Well, how far down is that? It's yes. A... Yeah, yeah. See so this has been dug out at some stage. The, the trees are there. I don't know how much drop is on those trees down there. And then the house has been put in there. Well, that's where the gravesite was. Now, this property belonged to Ross Toby. Mm -hmm. And we'd fenced around the three um, the three trees that had Utapa on. And it's basically right where this house is. And to get an idea, that valley goes straight down to the race course. Yes. You said it was yep. all green. Yep. So how long do you reckon this house has been there? I don't know. You'd have to find out from the council how long that's been there. But that wasn't there when I went to Australia, and that was the last time I was up at the Utapa. And this is just the ridge line again, so there's no... Yeah, yeah, well, it looks like those, those trees have been out... A lot longer than what these ones have because they're all dry and yeah yeah so that's been a lot of logging or cutting off trees i don't know what they've done with the trees is that on the other side of the yeah so that would be yeah. on your side yeah yeah that's and a this totally is... different property yeah ross toby's is this property here to the right hand side yes yeah this right where that fence is and then down yeah and then down and he planted this last lot of Pines. And why did they plant pines on an Utapa in the first place? Well, he had it cleared where the Utapa was, and there was those three oh. trees that were there as markers. A, yes. Okay, and so where the, the there were no trees, obviously that's where the house was built. Yes. Yep. Because that's um, was the only clear spacings. Well, they could have cleared cleared them out and, and put a house right on the ridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, cutting trees out and 
having a stump grinder in it is nothing. But that's on a slope, you see. So where you've got the house is a flattened area. A horse to exercise it. And the trees were down here. And I knew that he'd put a fence around there. Now, air Nati Fatua, a couple of Komatoas in there knew where that grave site was. So they can't say they didn't know it was up there. Yeah, so everyone kind of knew it was up there, eh? Well, we knew as kids, so, you know, there was there was native Povey's um, family who lived opposite us at Stewart Street. There was us. There was um, Mohi Manikau, who was an old... Should we do an interview with Nada Povey and just ask her, hey what's going on here like maybe she might respond well you could do but she won't talk to me okay well maybe, maybe we should because we just to clarify a few things of what's going on i mean she grew up there we went past her house she knows the utapas up there and she's involved with the council she's involved with the um, Ngāti Whātua, mm. um like as a as an authority figure um then really mm. she should have had she should have uh, known about this. Maybe mm. imagine if she didn't know. Do you think she knew? She knew. Yeah, of course she did. Yeah. Well, if we all knew. But imagine if she didn't know the house was built. Well, yeah. she may not know that yeah. because I didn't know it until the other day when I sent them up to take the photos, and I thought, oh my goodness, why haven't they been protecting the site? Yeah. Now that's it's up to them to protect it not me or anyone else yeah. in the area it's Ngāti Whātua in there to protect the horse the um historical sites so See, that's all old tree cuttings that's not new stuff so it's been down for a while eh? does Ngāti Whātua fuck a papa back to um Tamatea Pōkai Whenua no, no, but it doesn't matter because this is this all all this area is supposed to be protected and looked after by Nati Fatu. It doesn't matter whose iwi they are, the iwi is supposed to be under the umbrella. Yeah, um well luckily I came along because that's my granddad. Mm, it is. <laughs> it's your ancestor there that's been What's the chances? Well And I just happen to be passing through. Where's the bones when I've dug up putting well, what we can do, I rang up Colt and he said that we should go to, um, he gave me instructions because he's done wire tapu all around, mm. okay? And he told me uh, to check out the New Zealand Historical Places Trust yep. in Wellington. He, he knows that most things are held in Wellington, but he instructed me to go check it out if it's in Auckland. Okay, now when I rang Ngāti Whātua, who does a lot of their sort of work when they have to go out and do inspections. And I've been with her quite a few times, so I get on quite well with her. So I rang her and I said, hmm, what's going on with up the top of the race course and um, Otamatea Nui's gravesite? She said, well, I have heard the talk of that, but Bonnie, that's not on a historical site um, sheet. So it's not lodged as a historical site. So Well, we should do a little bit more investigation and we'll go check it out 100%. But mm. this is good awareness. Um, we can raise the awareness and ask the questions and, um, and see um, if we can get the site protected. Mm. Well, how are you going to protect it with the house being in the middle of it? I don't know. We'll sort something. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what happens in in cases like this. Well, is it can, destroyed? Well, you can get the house lifted off there and everything lifted off there, and then it Eurovision then it house will, Eurovision. We'll go call up Eurovision yeah. uh, house removers. Well, it's it should have been none because we all knew it was there. So that's a trouble. See, they don't consult with the original land or the owners of the land yeah. and they just don't they just go ahead and think they're gonna uh, get away with it and it's like the Kaipa Dairy section yeah. sites yeah that shouldn't be happening either and it is that's shocking
So these trees were all up here two months ago? Yep. And there's no road to that house, eh? Ah, there's no road. Uh, it just comes from the other house. Ah, oh, so they've kind of done it on the sneaky, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Because everyone knew this was a nudipar up here, eh? Yep. A pass site. So we've come all the way up from the race course, up the hill, and then further up here. And the Utapas are all around at the top, and there's a house built up there, and apparently they're going to be building a dam on the Utapas. Yeah, the hey? They pulled the logs out of here, took them down to the sawmill when they were cutting it up with blew up. The sawmill blew up and knocked all the people off the fucking machine. Oh my god. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, you, we'll talk, tell the story. They took, took some trees out of here, they took them down to the local sawmill, and the machine blew up and knocked everybody who pulled the trees down off the machine. And we all remember what happened with poltergeist, eh? You want to disappear into a TV. <laughs> so that's what happens when you mess with Utapas, okay? There is a reason why everybody in every culture respected Utapa. So I don't know what's going on here. He's really upset. He works for these guys. Their plant here. They were putting logs in that through it. See how it's close to the Buddha Park or in the bottom? Yeah. They, that's their bench there. Yeah, because no, they were, said they would top it up a log from up there. Yeah, see how it's, see how it's all mangled and twisted? You might have to get out and have a look. Uh, yeah, you can see it's, it's all bent. stuff on that shed. Well, when they were putting logs through and the logs went in and it blew up, like bounced off the whole um, brackets and that. And they were standing on the side feeding the logs through. They all got thrown off, and the thing ended up on top of the shed there. Look. That's yeah, they, a boat. They flipped out. The logs flipped out. Well, they don't know. They don't know whether they've got. I asked them were they the logs from up the top there, because if they are, don't cut them. Leave them. Get rid of them. Don't do anything to them, because they all have. You've cut the spirit down, the spirits in those trees. Jeez, yeah. yeah. So um, then he came up, he was really upset, he, he, and he told me, and I said, I told you last week to make sure none of those were, um, uh, what are they, what are they called? The trees? Um, oh, gum trees. Gum trees. Gum trees. Oh, gum trees. And he said, no, they weren't gum trees. And I said, well, there you go. They own They own all this. And then I said, well, I hope it was none of their boys that went up there and, and um, cut the trees down. And I said, you want to be careful because there's one more that comes in the trees. These are warnings. The third one will be a death. Mm. Yeah. So, you've already had two. You've had this blow up and go the way it has. Then they've had the accident on the farm where the worker's been put in the hospital. The third one's going to be the big one. Okay, so here's the um, saw, sawmill, and that's the machine. There's that orange thing, the machine, is supposed to be on the ground. Um, it just completely kind of. I don't know what it did, but it's supposed to be on the ground and facing the other way.
Oh my god, okay, so this is all Utapa and stuff, uh, cemetery. And yeah, if you can put the drone up, maybe around the back of those trees and then come back around, I don't know whether you can yep. do that. Yeah. And, and even you'll around... See, you'll see that it's got a bank. Any invading walkers used to come up through the river and then come up the bank here to try and invade the site. And they used to have to come up over that cliff. Yeah. Well, that's where all the warriors used to stop them. Yeah. That, that, you know, if they didn't get them down on the mud flats, they'd get them on the cliff there. So your friend who lived in the front, did she say she experienced spookies? Yeah, yeah. She was, she was a walker and her, her in-laws owned the big house in front. Well, that big house in front used to be, belong to Bridges. And he was a local Presbyterian minister. Presbyterian. They, yeah, Presbyterian. And they had a church in the middle of Helensville there. And they lived there, brought their kids up. And he was also a fisherman. So, you know, they'd been around here a long, long time. And then they sold to Walkers. Yeah. And she was saying when they built that house, because that was a new house. Yeah. Put on the property. They built it for the for um, Jackie. And Jackie was saying she they were laying in bed quite a few times. Like they lived here for about I don't know, fifteen, twenty years. Yeah. But they had people walking and old chieftains and that walking down their corridor. Wow. Out, and nothing ever happened to them. Nothing bad happened to them, but she had the house blessed about five times, wow. and they still couldn't get rid of them. Well, you're so not going to be able to. You no, can't just no, bless no. something and think it's going to go yeah, away. Yeah, she <laughs> then told me, that's how I know this was a Utapa, because she told me. Yeah. And I learnt from there, and then I asked Mohi Vanakau, and he said yes. The bank there is where anyone coming to the path, if they were trying to challenge it, is where they would meet the, you know, like the, the protective warriors and they'd battle it out to stop them from getting through to the path site. So there was a lot of fighting here, a lot of battling. Yeah, yeah well they used to come across because that was a shallow part of the river, it was the only part that they could get across without having to swim across and so they, certain times, of the tide, they could walk across the mud flats. So the British used to come across from Bradley's Road across the, the low-lying area, which would then, the river would then go to Rewadi. So certain times of the, of the month and that, you could go just come straight across the river. So these have all been sold? Yeah, they have, yeah, but sold. this is the Utapa. This, this is, is the, the burial, right this is the burial site, right what we're on. Out the window, because then I can't This see is it. an indication of how many houses they're going to have here. Shall I count the letter boxes? <laughs> okay, Two, nerd. four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Twenty-nine? So somebody's making a lot of money. That's like uh, that's, that's like, twenty nine lives destroyed. <laughs> and and twenty nine lots of eight hundred thousand dollars to be made. Wow, that's a lot of money. Hey. The, the, the amazing part, as I can kind of fathom, who actually signed this, that pathway off? Yeah. Who right. signed it off? Yeah. yeah, who signed it off? Who signed it off? Uh, this is Natapovi and Latapovi brought their children up in this house. Wow, so they definitely know that the path site is right behind them. Yes, eh? of course. They yeah, live here. We, we can up, see it. We used to go up there and it's pick kids. watercress and wow. get eels and, and the kids, and we were always up there with the kids and that. So. Wow! Yeah. That really is on the back doorstep. Years, years and years, yeah. And of course our house was opposite. Now, my family have owned this land, have been on this land since 1843, I think Papa had the house back there, the two-story house. Yeah. And down on those flats, 
is reserve. Now council make farmers plant reserves and next and fence the fence lines next to the waterways. Now that has never been planted or anything by council to this date. Oh, but they expect the farmers to do it. Yes. Okay, now this is the inside of the race track and the race course. The, mm. the, there's a local farmer that uh, leases all of the race course piece, which is really good. He um, plants it, cleans it up for the shows. Yep. Does a good job. Um, but as we get out to the edge here, where the, where the flyover is heading, now where these trees are, oh, bef and on the race course side of the trees, yep. this is um, a piece that goes along towards Stewart Street, mm -hmm. inside where you can see it's fenced. Well, that um, should be planted with trees because that used to be planted with trees, but the cattle and that have been in there and eaten them all out and knocked them over. And Why is there cattle in there? I noticed there was cattle in the race course. Yeah, well, the cattle are good on the inside, but they shouldn't be on the where these two fences are because that used to be, when I bought my land, I looked at all this to see what the titles and that were, and all the inside bit where you see those two fences, that used to be rated as um, Native Reserve because oh. the council had it. So Native Reserve should have been planted with trees. You see trees to the side. Those are all dead now because, you know, cattle have chewed them and they've died. And Just also right that there. used to be like mouldy land and it was gifted to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, Tim, Tim and Tia's line gifted that to, and that's a pork eye line. Yeah. Gifted that to the local community to use. Yeah. Because we used to have the circuses here and the circuses used to be huge. And the rodeos used to be huge. So all this land was used maybe three, four times a year for, you know, holding the horses for the rodeos and having the food for the, when the circus was here. Yep. And, of course, parking. Now, you're getting across on my bit of property here where the horse is and back a bit is, is where we were brought up, two-story house. The Johnson House, the house beside it, the two-story house was Mohi Manikau's house. Yep. And we're going back across towards the river. All that should have been planted. Council own all this. Should have been all planted by, um, uh, yeah, lovely Pudakawa trees and whatever. This is a bowling club. This is also owned... So they say the council will own it, but in actual fact, it was supposed to go back to local iwi, yeah. which was Tato and Pokai um, Tamatea. Tamatea Pokai Whenua. Yep. So, uh, yep. Lineage. They the, they the, uh, they're the owners of all of this. Wow. So bowling club, I think they lease the grounds. And but again, council should have had all that planted. This is our Aral River, which is only a quarter of the size that it normally is. This drain here, when mm. I bought my property, that drain wasn't there. I dug that drain, wow. and with the kettle on the other side, all the fence and that's falling into it. I dug the drain all the way through there. It's about seven foot deep. So what were you saying so. about the dam up the top as well? Like it's affected... Well, if we go back, see this is all. This was all swamp land. Yeah. And as I clean the drains out, I've pulled the filling back because you know you couldn't have a big pile of rubbish. So as I pulled it back, I've filled this area. Yeah. And that's what we live in. Wow. So you've got two story house. You've got the the house beside the two story house. Yeah. That's the house that I built. Yeah. And that's my yard. That I had for for my diggers and that. Now um, the other family use it yeah. for their storage and that. Uh, it's my horse here. Yeah. And I've always had horses on this property. And uh, for some reason, the council have um, changed the zoning on this property. 
taken it out of Mary Land title and put it in general title, and I don't know, don't know whether they're allowed to legally do that without the permission of the hapu that actually own the, the and, property. And so it's actually your property as well. It's like, what are they up to? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it's, it's, oh, you know, yeah. I, I, I didn't buy it. Like my dad and that didn't buy the, the swamp part. Yeah. But it, yeah, we've been on it. I've been on there for. 65 years I was born on, on that property and, and across uh, the road was Dame um... well yeah see the council took all of that road as a public works under the public works act yeah but never ever ever even the race course never ever gave it back to the, the rightful owner 